Hello, everyone, and welcome to another BSD video. FreeBSD just had another dot release, namely 13.1, and this reminded me of some unfinished business I had with it last year, specifically performance issues with Linux QEMU KVM hosts and a general lack of BSD support in the Linux kernel hypervisor. Also, I noticed that YouTube videos showcasing FreeBSD, including mine, were all over the place with constantly changing virtual machine resolutions and blurry screens, really making things look ugly. There are one or two videos out there that look pretty decent and legible, but the creators share very little on how they were able to achieve this. So today, in this video, I'm going to use VirtualBox with a FreeBSD 13.1 VM and, here's the kicker, a fixed guest resolution of 1920 by 1080 with no constant hopping around, and I'm going to show you how I did it. FreeBSD derives from BSD and, as its origins, as a research OS decades ago at UC Berkeley. It's a great learning operating system, along with being server-first, and I find setting up VMs to this end very convenient. Here's one now. Here's the latest FreeBSD uh, EFI boot screen in all its 1080p glory. And uh, so I'm just going to hit Enter here uh, to boot up the uh, ISO. And uh, this is the boot only ISO uh, to keep thing the downloads small. I'm going to just uh, select live CD for now because I have some things to discuss with you. So I logged in as root, no password. And uh, let me uh, clear the terminal. I'm going to use the easy editor or EE. Comes built in to FreeBSD. So FreeBSD, um, the uh, boot only ISO is what I used for this video. And um, again, as I mentioned earlier, VirtualBox, the uh, config that I use, um, and here's the ki kicker, is um, I set the uh, display adapter to VBox SVGA or VirtualBox SVGA and max out the video memory and make sure that 3D acceleration is not uh, set or checked. For RAM, I have uh, four gigabytes, pretty reasonable. Uh, disk storage, I have set for 20 gigabytes. And before, this is key, before you start the uh, virtual machine the first time, you want to open a terminal and you want to type the following commands. The first command is to set the EFI mode. So VBox manage, case is important, modify VM, and then in quotes, you, the name of the VM you are modifying, in my case it's freeb1, dash dash firmware EFI, and that switches to EFI mode from BIOS mode. This is key for this fixed screen resolution. Next, a VBox manage, set extra data, quotes, the name of your virtual machine again, whatever that is, and then VBox internal to slash EFI graphics resolution, and then 1920 by 1080. Again, this is case sensitive. Pause the video at any time should you need to. Okay, so this is the magic sauce, the magic ingredients to make all this work for a OBS studio uh, recording, video recording of a uh, FreeBSD virtual machine for YouTube. So uh, I'm done with this, so I'm not gonna save because this is a live uh, CD environment. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot, and we'll install for real this time. So we'll wait for it to um, 
come down and come back up again. So we're just going to hit enter here. We'll come back to the, uh, the menu on what to do next, hopefully in a few seconds. There it is. So this time we'll choose install instead of live CD. We'll continue with the default key map, US keys and US localization is uh, default here. So as I mentioned just now, I will call this VM freebie dash one. And for the optional system components to install, since this is over the network, I want to, um, you know, just stick with the defaults here. So some installation files were not found on the boot volume. Yes, because this is the boot only ISO that I downloaded. So I have to configure networking. So IP version four and DHCP is required here. So let it acquire an IP address. We'll skip IP version six today. The DNS servers look good. And instead of ZFS, this time I'm just gonna use the uh, UFS uh, setup. Um, I'll use the GUID partition table uh, because this is an EFI machine. It has three partitions proposed. EFI partition, a root partition, and a swap partition. Very simple. So we'll commit to partitioning this disk. And we'll download from the main ftp.freebsd.org site. This will take a, a few seconds. So I'll use the magic of video editing to skip over much of this. So you guys won't get bored, hopefully, and switch videos. All right, it's done. So it's asking for the root password. So I'm going to type it once, and I'm going to type it twice. All right, next time zone selector. I'm in uh, North America. Now, there's no shortcut to this. You have to scroll down to, in my case, uh, America and uh, US American Pacific on the Pacific time zone. I'll skip time and date settings since I'll use NTP. Um, I'll also select here on the system configuration, uh, the mouse daemon for the console PS2 mouse pointer, which is important for the display manager we'll be configuring and also the NTP uh, t uh, system and network time synchronization. Also, uh, for security hardening, I would like to disable SendMail since we're not exploring SendMail today. Keep things nice and tight. Would you like to add users? Yes, I would. I'd like to add myself. So my username is Steven. My full name is Steven. I'll use the default UID, user ID, and uh, I'll add myself to the wheel group here. And uh, the standard shell is fine. Home directory permissions default. Um, password authentication, yes. Empty, no. Random password, no. I'm going to enter the password for myself twice. There we go. Lock out the account. Nope. I want it usable. So this is the review. Looks good. Yes. Add another user, no. All right. And we're done with the initial configuration and installation. We'll just hit exit here. Uh, installation is now finished. Uh, open the shell? No, let's just go ahead and reboot. Okay, there we go. Nice boot screen, I love that uh, logo. Okay, just hit enter there. Um, and there's our standard Berkeley Unix uh, boot up scrolling text. Mac OS has something very similar here uh, if you enable this. Okay, let's log in uh, with Steven and my password. Okay, so it gives you some a nice welcome uh, screen. Let's clear it though. And let's take a look at uh, the OS release file. So as you can see, it's FreeBSD 13.1 release with a generic kernel. Uh, the file system table uh, shows thusly. Nothing surprising here. Three partitions. Okay, 
Now let's take a look and see what serv services are running. Is service dash E. So these are our services, not too many. What's important is NTP and mouse daemon are running. It says send mail is configured, but it shouldn't be running because I had it disabled. Okay, uh, let's become root here with SU. Let's do some uh, security patch checking here for the kernel. So freebsd-update fetch. So this will fetch any kernel patches or security patches for the kernel. Doesn't look like it found any. But if it does find some, the next command should be freebsd-update install. Of course, none are available, so I guess we're good for now. This has just been released, so there haven't been any patches yet at the time I recorded this video. So let's clear the uh, screen and let's update the packages so with package update and then package upgrade. Package management tool is not yet installed in our system. We need it, so we'll let it install. And, uh, because this is the uh, boot only ISO, we should have all the packages already up to date and they are. Your packages are up to date. I'm using the console mouse, the mouse daemon, uh, to highlight certain things uh, in the console, which is kind of neat for FreeBSD. So let's uh, install the first package with package install sudo. I don't use do as because do as is not uh, compatible with my centralized authentication system. Sorry. But if you want do as, do as is very secure and light. Um, so you're welcome to try it out. I just need to need sudo. Okay, so let me uh, enable with uh, vi sudo. Let me enable myself to use sudo by uncommenting this line here to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. And we'll write and quit. Good. So now if I um, exit out of this root shell, let's type exit. I'm now at uh, back to Steven. So I'm of group Steven and wheel. So now sudo dash s with my own shell should um, work and it does. Fantastic. So now we can continue. So let's install some more stuff with package install nano EE just doesn't suit me very well. Uh, bash, because I like the shell, and bash dash completion. So we'll just install those things. And uh, it's done, including the dependencies, such as read line. Okay. Um, so let's uh, change my shell with VIPW. And there's the line for my account. There's my hashed password. My goodness, is that a long string? So instead of slash bin slash shell, I'm going to go with slash USR slash local slash bin slash bash. There we go. Escape colon right and quit. Good. Password list updated. Excellent. Yeah. I really like a, a console mouse. It's uh, something I'm not used to in Linux. Uh, brings me back 20, 30 years. <laughs> okay. So one more thing here um, to do is package install. And uh, so uh, we want... Um, the uh, VirtualBox graphics drivers. And here you would install NVIDIA drivers, if you have NVIDIA or AMD drivers, if you have AMD graphics. But we're having VirtualBox uh, virtual machine here. So VirtualBox-OSE-additions uh, uh, is a requirement. Um, so it, it reminds us to uh, use VBox SVGA as the preference for, the, um, for these guest additions. Do not enable 3D acceleration, as I mentioned earlier in the video. 
and badness ensues, you will see a yellow alert in your config uh, item in uh, VirtualBox settings. You may safely ignore it because they want you to use VMS VGA for some reason. Okay, um, let's configure rc.conf in Etsy because we have to enable the VirtualBox guest editions by typing vbox guest underscore enable equals yes in all caps and quotes and then vbox service underscore enable equals yes and then finally uh, vbox service underscore flags equals dash dash disable dash time sync from the host because we have NTP daemon enabled. So you don't want to have this redundancy uh, enabled. So we'll disable it. It doesn't sync from the host, but grabs from NTP uh, directly over the uh, network. All right, now we can reboot. So reboot with fingers crossed and see what happens. Okay, we're back to the lovely boot screen. Hitting enter gives us the uh, boot scrolling text. Scrolling boot text, I should say, rather. But, uh, okay, we've got our login. Log in as Steven. Hopefully I will have Bash. And looks like Bash loaded successfully. Okay, so sudo s, because I want uh, root as a Bash shell. And there it is, root at freeb-1. We'll continue with our configuration. So let's install some more stuff with package install xorg for the X window system. XDM, that's the X Display Manager for XFCE. So that should take care of our graphical install. So we'll let that install. This will take some time, uh, folks, so I'll be skipping through this uh, section to make sure this video isn't too long. And uh, so it fetched the packages, and now it's installing the packages. And it's done. Some reminders. Um, we won't do this today, but uh, here you, you can follow instructions for enabling the screensaver, uh, for suspend, resume, um, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, good stuff to read. So I wouldn't skip over that if you know if you're interested. So um, let's add ourselves to the video group or myself rather with PW group mod video dash m steven so i just added myself to the uh video group as i just said um that's important uh to make sure that uh xdm and uh, xfce are working properly let's enable uh the uh xdm display manager we'll go back into etcrc.conf so you can see our virtual box settings there um we'll add a couple of lines here dbus underscore enable equals yes. This is all in the FreeBSD handbook, uh, by the way, uh, this section. Uh, XDM underscore enable equals yes. FreeBSD handbook, by the way, was one of my first Unix handbooks and learning materials that I used in my career, so can't recommend it enough. I don't think it's as good as the Arch Wiki, Arch Linux Wiki, but it's certainly very, very, very good. I had the printed version too, at least two. So uh, next, let's uh, edit uh, slash user local etc x11 xorg of uh, screen dash resolution dot conf file, and uh, this is where we set and let x uh, xdm 
know what our screen resolution is for our EFI virtual machine, which is, of course, 1080p, right? Section, screen, in quotes, and we'll tab identifier, screen zero, in quotes. So we're going to be uh, operating on screen zero. The device shall be, in quotes, uh, card zero. And we'll add a subsection here. And we'll call the subsection display, in quotes. And the modes shall be just one line. It'll be, in quotes, 1920 by 1080. That's how XDM knows what the screen resolution is. And I'll type end subsection here, close that off for the subsection, and we'll end section. And that will complete the screen resolution.conf file. It's looking good. So I'll write it out. Okay. So we'll exit. And uh, let's clear the screen. And we'll set up our .x session file by typing echo quotes uh, dot space slash user slash local slash etsy slash xdg slash xfce4 slash xinitrc quotes. And we'll send it to the uh, home directory uh, slash dot x session file. And uh, let me make sure by catting it, accession. Yes, it wrote correctly. This space here between the period and the first slash before user, that's very important to have that uh, space there. So don't, don't forget to put that in there. Okay, otherwise things won't work, right? Sudo in at six should do a reboot. So we're switching to run level six. Remember, uh, BSD is run level driven, RC driven, with scripts. Okay, crossing fingers, hoping for the XDM login screen. And come on. Yes, welcome to freebie-1 with a nice console log on the bottom right behind my mug. So I'm just logging in usual way. So uh, we still have the uh, the smaller screen resolution here as the first XFCE startup. So we just have to do this once, right? Um, and it'll hold. So we just go to display under uh, settings and we'll select um, 1920 by 1080 and click apply and keep this configuration. Again, you have to do this once. So it's done now permanently. Now XFCE is fully aware of our guest resolution. It's saying virtual box guest additions update is available. Yeah, we won't deal with that today in this video. I'll let you guys do that as your for your own exercise. So in the terminal here, um, let me sudo package install uh, Firefox so we can access the online documentation from FreeBSD. Uh, I put LibreOffice to make this install useful and NeoFetch in case you guys are curious what NeoFetch uh, reports on this system. Bunch of packages it needs to download, including its dependencies. So I'm gonna use some video editing here to skip over the most boring parts. So it's fetching, extracting, and installing as before. And, uh, There it is, with some additional notes and missing features, etc. I'll let you pause the video if you wish to read all that. Um, NeoFetch shows the following. So yes, we're indeed running FreeBSD 13.1, XFCE 4.16, um, and running the VirtualBox graphics adapter, and we're running uh, using 900 megs of four gigs in RAM. Not quite as light as you would expect with BSD, just as a heads up. 
I can get away with a, a little bit less with Linux XFCE. So uh, let's go to settings and appearance. Let's switch to dark mode here, graybeard dark. Icons are okay, that's the only choice we have. I always like to enable anti-aliasing here and the hinting slight and the sub-pixel order RGB for my uh, LCD monitors. We'll do a custom DPI of 120 uh, to uh, make it easier for you guys to read what I'm doing here. Let's go back to settings manager. Uh, we've got the usual XFCE settings, nothing unusual here. We can change the desktop wallpaper, make it a little different. Yeah. So pretty much the uh, usual configuration items in the settings window. So nothing really exciting to show here. Standard XFCE stuff. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Okay, Office. So we've got LibreOffice installed. Let's check. So we've got um, version 7.3.3.2 for FreeBSD 13.1, compiled somewhat sometime this year. So not too old, pretty good. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, let's go to the uh, FreeBSD website. So we launch uh, Firefox that we just installed. 100 thank yous, version 100's release. Make Firefox my default browser, sure, why not? We won't do this now. Um, we'll save this th system theme is selected. We'll save that. Good enough. We'll close the Firefox security notice tab. And we'll go to freebsd.org and hit enter. And there's the FreeBSD site. FreeBSD, the power to serve. They've updated the icons and so on, but um, this hasn't really changed since the 90s. Um, it was very, very, very good back then, and it is pretty okay now, um, over 20 years later. Definitely make sure you understand the security advisories and the errata notices before you get frustrated. So under Get Free BSD, um, it gives you instructions on which image to choose. For this video, I chose the AMD64 ISO image, boot only ISO version. That's really small and just downloads the additional stuff as you need it from the uh, interwebs. You get the latest packages that way too, automatically. So very good. Okay, so here's the documentation. And here's the much vaunted handbook. It's, it came out first in 1995, and that's about when I started reading it. Wow, uh, 27 years ago, if my math serves me correctly. Um, it's a long time, quite a career. Wonderful reading, I, I always found it was fun, bedtime reading. So welcome to FreeBSD. So it's a liberal open source license or BSD license, Berkeley license, strong TCP IP networking, fully integrated open ZFS support, extensive security features, 30,000 pre-built packages, documentation as we see here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What can FreeBSD do? Web servers, IP routing, firewalls and NAT, uh, FTP servers, email servers, and more. Servers, server, 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 server first. Then comes education. Are you a student of computer science? Research. Again, this is why I set up these VMs for. It's what I'm going to show you today. It's perfect for research and learning. Networking, embedded, uh, desktop is way down here. And software development is last. So again, server first, desktop is a distant, way down the list of priorities for the FreeBSD team. It's just the nature of the natural evolution of this OS. Okay. And I'll conclude by showing you the about the XFCE desktop environment screen. So, yep. FreeBSD 13.1 release, 64-bit, 4.16 is the XFCE version. I'm on an AMD Ryzen 9. 
little mini PC, fantastic device. Although FreeBSD is server first, and over the years has been relegated in production to virtual machines and storage appliances, having a desktop environment set up makes further explorations, testing, and learning with terrific online documentation perfect for hobbyists and professionals alike. If you find this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share to help with the YouTube algorithms. Until next time, take care.